Hey guys, this is Imran and today I'm going to show you guys the basics of Adobe Fireworks CS5 and hopefully that will put us in good stead to actually create a navigation bar and that will be on my next tutorial. So okay, straight away when we load up Adobe Fireworks, uh, you'll get this a screen similar to this. Now one thing I want to mention is you've got loads of panels. Over here you've got the Optimize panel, the History panel, the Align panel, we've got the States panel, the Layers panel and another key uh, panel over here is with the properties panel which is on the bottom left on the left side here we've got our different tools yep so that's the we can actually change the, the appearance and the layout of our panels by pressing on this top right hand button here where it says expanding mode and I can select icon mode now that's just giving me more space as you can see when I click everything is still there it's just giving me a bit more room you can also click on netbook mode and etc but I prefer to work with expanded mode okay when the first thing we need to do when fireworks loads is we need to create new and we need to create a new fireworks document you can start off with a template but I'm gonna start from scratch so let's click on fireworks document a pop-up box appears and we get asked the question site about the size so we've got the height and the width to select I've put in 900 by 900 so we'll get a nice uh, nice square uh, the resolu res resolution doesn't really matter to be honest at the moment um, the canvas color it could be white it could be transparent where that comes into play is if you're going to create an animated gif or something and you want it to be see-through apart from the actual object then you click tap transparent um, but mainly we, we I'd go with white um, so I've pressed OK on white and press OK so this is my 900 by 900 canvas it's white and OK just to go through some of the main things on the left right here we've got the select section we've got the bitmap section the vector the web and the colors section and also the view section so those are the main sections on the left right here I'm gonna focus more on the vector side of it this uh, tutorial so the first thing I want to do is add an auto shape um, what I'm gonna do is click this star right here if I click and hold I got that I can select different shapes um, spiral and polygon rectangle and so on what I'm gonna do just to keep it simple is gonna select the star tool what I can do at this point is click and drag so my star has been selected I can now modify the, sh the, st the star by pressing these yellow um, pointers I can actually click and move and that, that alters the star a little bit makes it a little bit longer and, and you can do f funky things like that going back to the select, select section I want to just focus on this one right here this is the main one when I want to move an object I need to make sure that the, the black arrow has been selected which is the top left and I can actually click on an object and move it yeah um, the second thing that I can do on the select section is scale so if I click the scale tool I can actually click and rotate I can actually change the size we've also got if I click and hold we've got the skew tool distort tool let's just have a look at the skew tool and see what that does drag it's just skewed it a little bit yeah that's basically it. it just gives it a bit of a tilt now this one right here the subsection tool whatever it is if I click I'm gonna just zoom in for this so I can show you guys clearly I've zoomed in using the zoom tool right here um, if I select this subsection tool if I click on an object and you, as you can see there's a pointer right here if I click on the pointer I can actually move the object and that changes the shape of the the object if I click and if I pull one of these handles it makes it a little fatter now if I zoom out to fit all you can see that the tip of it has changed a little bit so that's what that tool does then we've also got the crop tool um, and I'll show you guys that I'll undo it straight away so if I highlight a section I want and press enter only that area is selected I'm just gonna edit undo that crop okay so that's the first thing 
Now, the next thing I want to cover, and which is quite an important part with fireworks, is the properties panel, which is right at the bottom over here. Now, with the properties panel, the key thing to remember is that the properties panel changes depending on what you've selected. So if I draw another auto shape, this time I'll just draw a long rectangle. At the moment the long rectangle has been selected so I've got the properties of the long rectangle so I can change the, 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 the color of the rectangle so I can change it to red. If I wanted to be a bit more creative if I click on this solid button and on this drop I get a drop down menu and I can select a pattern that goes within there. I can select a gradient I'll stick with a linear we got radial and, and so on. I'll stick with the linear one for the moment just to show you guys. Now I've got two colors inside my linear gradient. What I can do is if I wanted to change the colors, the two colors, um, say I wanted blue and white. So what you do is you click on the paint bucket. So I've already got my blue. On the other side I can click on white. Yeah, And I can also swap them if I move that across and I move this one across I can actually swap. I can also add another color. So if I wanted three I click anywhere with on on this lower section where these mini paint bucket tools are I can actually click and give another color so I've got three colors I've got white red and blue yeah so that's just a little bit about the gradient tool so you guys can mess around with the properties a little bit and, and alter the properties as you want just one more key part um, about the properties panel is that we've got these fills right here so if I press this plus button right here on the fill what I can do is I can do different things like add a drop shadow so as you can see I've got a drop shadow now these are the properties for the drop shadow I can make it a little bit longer change the color of the drop shadow so I can see I can have a green drop shadow it doesn't look particularly pretty but you get the basic idea now if I suddenly realize that oh actually I don't want this drop shadow what you can do is just press this X button right here sorry this tick button and it'll become an X yeah just another example of a different sort of a fill um, let's go with a glow so I'm going to press a glow and you can see I've got a nice outer glow around the section I can play, pick a different color and mess with the properties for the glow so that's just the fill yeah now like I was saying earlier the properties panel is unique in that it changes depending on what we've selected so if I select the star well the odd star anyway um, the properties for that will appear so as you can see it's still blue and it's a solid blue color I can change the outside and I can give it a black outer edge and make that edge a little bit larger and so on so you can mess around with stuff like that now the next thing I want to show you is the layers panel on the layers panel we have at the moment I've got layer 1 and in there there's two layers I've got a rectangle and I've got this star auto shape now what I'm going to do is with my select tool selected I'm going to put the star over or the rectangle over the star now as you can see the star is behind the rectangle if I wanted it to be the other way around what I can do is I can just click on this layers panel and move it above slightly so it can be a little bit tricky but you get the idea so now the star is actually above or higher up compared to the rectangle so that's that's how layers work now with states states are a little bit to do with creating animations now I'm just gonna go through a basic point what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna delete that rectangle I'm gonna click on states and I'm just gonna press uh, duplicate states what that's gonna do is it's gonna give me another state and it's going to be exactly the same as what's on the canvas at the moment there'll be no difference and I'm just going to add three states and I'm going to after the current one press OK so on the first state the star is over here what I'm going to do is on the second state I'm going to just going to move the star a little bit and on the third state I'm going to move it this over here and on the fourth state it can be over here now it's going to be a little bit random but when I press this play button right here you can see the star starts to jump about yeah so that these are that's how an animation is made sort of like how cartoons are made but obviously they use different software um, but that is a basic animation so I'm gonna stop that 
So we've talked about layers, we've talked about states, we've talked about the properties panels, and we've also talked about some of the tools. The key ones we focused on have been the vector. Um, just to give you a bit more about the vector, this freeform tool, if I click on the freeform tool and select this object, I can actually move different parts and, and alter my object. Yep. Um, we've also got the pen tool. If I click on and I can just draw my shape, whichever sort of a vector I want, if I close it up now, that is one shape that I've drawn. Yeah, I can make it a bit more rounded if I pull, click and pull. Oops, yep, yeah, there you go. Click and pull, click and pull, and that is my odd looking shape. I can give it an inside color as well if I wanted. Okay, so the one thing I haven't focused on is the bitmap. What I'm going to do is I found a picture. I'm going to press edit, copy. Uh, before I paste, I'm just going to delete everything on the canvas. I'm going to press paste. At the moment, you can see it's not the best looking picture. Selected this picture. If, what if I wanted to get rid of the black area? What I can do is use this magic wand tool. If I click on the magic wand, and click on the black area and press the delete button on my keyboard the whole every, all the black that was there has been that I, that was automatically selected has been deleted so click delete 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 and delete now if i wanted to get rid of the uh, lines i just press the escape and there you go this is my new object i think there's one piece missing one black area left but there you go the a basic logo of the Bolton Wanderers, which is uh, the soccer team or the football team, depending on where you're from, um, has been selected. The same things apply when it comes to the select section. I can actually scale, make it a little bit larger. Um, I can also change the color. So if I click on the paint bucket tool, I can actually drop the paint bucket where needed. Yeah and so on. So that's just the basics of fireworks. Um, just obviously you've got the rubber tool as well so I can just rub the the ribbons out if I needed and again the properties for the, rib the rubber are at the bottom so if I wanted a much larger rubber I've got the rubber right at the bottom. So there you go I hope you've enjoyed the tutorial and, and we're ready for the next tutorial. The one aspect I haven't covered is, well actually there's quite a lot I haven't covered but a key part of it that I haven't covered is the web section which is on the left right here and we'll, we'll focus on that when we make a navigation bar but hopefully this tutorial has prepared you for what's about to come next. Um, take care and yeah comment, rate, subscribe, leave me a bit of feedback um, and, and whatever, yeah it, it always helps.